Section three, keys and values. So now that we've been able to connect to our database that we've either installed or set up remotely, we're gonna take a look at storing and retrieving strings in our database. And we're gonna look at the reachability of data, which is a very important concept. So this is video 3.1, storing and retrieving strings. So in this video, you'll see what it means when Redis is referred to as a key value store and, and how we can use Redis to store, retrieve, and perform some basic and maybe a little more advanced manipulations of the most basic data type that Redis understands, the string. So now the, the most important thing to note with Redis is that all data is stored in a database and accessed through identifiers called keys. A key then is nothing more than any string value of up to 512 megabytes in size, which is very large. Although keep in mind that shorter keys are better performing than longer ones. And note that each database has its own set of keys and that you'll only connect to one database at a time. So there will be no conflict between them if you use the same keys in different databases. And finally, I'll just mention here that nearly all data commands whether they operate on a single key or multiple keys, are actually atomic. That means they, they happen all at once and either succeed or fail completely. So let's talk about the basic data access commands. The first couple will no doubt be quite intuitive to you. You can simply set, get, or delete values by their keys. Also, we can do a get set which will get a value and set a new value at the same time, and set an X, which actually allows you to set a value only if it doesn't already exist. And X actually stands for not existing. So let's take a look at those commands in the CLI. We're gonna go back and connect again to our database. Remember we did that in the last section. And we have a terminal. So I'm going to do a set command. I'm going to set name equal to Scott. So what this does is sets the key that's called name and the value of Scott. Oh, I'm sorry. I do need to off. And I'll try that again. Okay. Now we've set that value. Let's get it back out. As you'd expect, get retrieves the value that we just set. And we can delete that as well. It tells us that one was deleted. Now if we try to get it, there's nothing there. So let's try this. Let's get set name Scott. Well, it returns nil. That's what was there before. Now let's try get set name Nancy. Uh, now we get Scott because we had just set Scott in that database slot and now we've reset it with Nancy but we got the old value that's Scott. Uh, so let's try something else. Now let's try set nx. You remember that set nx only sets if it's not set. We get zero and what zero means here is that it changed nothing. If we do get name, we have Nancy. So now let's try delete name. Check again. It really is gone. And let's do the set NX to Jason again. Ah, now we received one, which means that it did do something. And if we get name, it is indeed JSON. Excellent. So now, of course, sometimes you'll want to change more than one value at once, either for performance reasons or to ensure that the changes are a single atomic action. They all happen at once and succeed or fail together. For these, there are the M commands. And they're, they're exactly variations on the commands that you just used. M set, M get, M set and X work exactly the same as set get and set set and x except that you may provide more than one set of values to them and uh, by the way delete actually by itself takes 
multiple values too, and there is no M delete. So let's turn to a super useful tool that you can apply to your keys. Expiration. Being able to have your keys expire at a certain time or after a period of time is extremely useful when using database, for example, as a cache, or when you have data that becomes irrelevant and can be cleaned up automatically to save memory at a later time. The commands expire and expire at allow you to modify any key to be removed after a number of seconds, in the first case, expire, or at a certain time, expire at. Alternatively, for simple string values, you can actually use the set ex, set x command to set a value with a timestamp in a single command. Then once the expiration has been set, the ttl command allows you to query that key for its expiration. And persist lets you delete the expiration time and then thus allowing the key to remain persistent. So let's play with that just a little bit. We still have a value in the name key of JSON, right? So we don't have to change that. Let's go ahead and say that we want to expire name in, well, let's make it quick, 10 seconds from now, all right? We got one, that means it did something. Let's check it's time to live. Three seconds left, so give it a couple moments. TTL, oh, negative two. So actually, it has passed. Let's call get name, and it is gone. So it has expired, and it's gone from the database. So finally, before we move on, I'd like to briefly mention a few more tricks Redis has up its sleeves. Using the INCR, or INC, so it's uh, short for increment, or increment by decrement, the ECR, and decrement by operations, you can increase or decrease an integer value without having to retrieve the value first. This is super useful for counters, rate limiters, or other similar operations. The get range and set range commands allow you to retrieve or replace part of a string extremely efficiently. So remember that strings can be extremely large. So this can be useful in a number of situations where you might need to work with parts of a, a, a large string. And similarly, the bit operations allow you to access specific positions in a string value as if they were bits in a bit array. So it's a little more esoteric and we're not really going to get into that. But just keep in mind, you can check it out on the, uh, the Redis site if you want to look at the documentation. So next up, we'll be looking at storing, retrieving, and querying your data when all you have are keys and we have no indexes.